So Rosemary and Havoc. So what I'd like to know is with the TNA rebrand, uh, exciting news, it was an exciting time. I want to know about your first reaction. So was it something that had been in the wind for a while, as some of the fans think, or did it come as a bit of a shock to you all? Hmm, that's interesting. Do you mind if we take that first half? Oh, go ahead. Yes. yes. So there, there were there were rumors. There were there were rumblings. Right before twenty twenty, there was even a throwback uh, TNA show planned for that year's WrestleCon, and then obviously the Great Pestilence shut that all down, and it didn't happen. But there was already plans. There was already nostalgia. There was feeding into the memories of TNA. So for it to come back, it wasn't necessarily a surprise. Perhaps that it actually just just pulled the plug. And, and went and did it rather than it just doing uh like the way the way they were planning it was like little spot shows to test the water and dip the toes in there was no time to be dipping any toes after the plague show <laughs> we got to jump and jump now so tna coming back it was a wonderful almost homecoming for for ourselves and havoc being two of the very few that were tna knockouts beforehand <laughs> yeah and uh, that's that is the exact point that i would make is that it wasn't, I mean, obviously we knew that it was inevitably going to happen again. It was just a matter of when. And as Rosemary said, she and I are TNA originals and TNA knockouts. So it's just like being right back at home again. Yes. That's Those a good old point. Is new again. Nostalgia is in. <laughs> mm. I was going to say, it must be nice. Because there's a, there's a lot of um, knockouts on the roster who've never been able to say, I am a TNA knockout. Yes. Uh, so it must be a really nice feeling for them to be able to say that now, where you guys have been able to say that before. So it's like, ah, we told you it was good. So um, <laughs> it feels as though, for me, with TNA or Impact in general as well, has been on upward trajectory in the last few years. Uh, it definitely has. Numbers don't lie. But recently, with the rebrand and Hard to Kill, it feels like we're on the cusp of something really big. And I just want to know, is this the most excited you've ever been uh, regarding TNA? It's definitely I mean, um, fun to anticipate. It's, uh, we would say, apprehensively <laughs> anticipating. Um, because... <laughs> there's so many different ways you, you, you you're you trying to build something and it's so easy to fall off a cliff without knowing that it's there while you're building next to it yes there's so, so many delicate little steps that need to be taken that that were the groundwork was laid with impact with so many people for so many years saying oh tna is still around tna is still a thing tna still exists <laughs> well yes it still exists and impact in all those years in those rebuilding years put its head down and just kept doing its own thing and doing its own thing despite people saying just die already just go away what are you you're irrelevant we said okay and we'll keep doing our thing keep doing our thing until we're ready to present something to the world in hard to kill <laughs> and that is exactly the title of that pay-per-view says it all we are hard to kill and mm -hmm. we're not going anywhere and so many people have been so quick to just scoff at anything that we've ever done but what exactly what we've done is rebuild and reclaim and i dare say that we put on the best wrestling show week after week regardless and we're not going anywhere. If I must reiterate that, we're here to stay. Good. Stay mad. It's uh, <laughs> it's one of those situations for me as a, as a fan, even before I was a reporter working in this industry, you know, it, I compare it to what they say in Game of Thrones about the Targaryens. Some of us were there knitting our TNA banners, waiting for the king and queen to come across the narrow sea and come back. It felt a little bit like that and hard to kill. Some of us felt vindicated or mm -hmm. although some of us have got to be objective on social media. But anyway, yes. um, here's one thing we can't not talk about. Um, and it does involve the Royal Rumble the other day and Jordan Grace entering that. And that, that has broke the internet. It, it, it's been amazing to see. For, for people who are fans of both, it, it's just been lovely. But I've got to know, um, would you two like to do something similar? Because i got to tell you, I'd pop for Decay's theme, entrance theme hitting at that event. I really <laughs> 
It all depends. The demon goes where the deal is to be struck. The demon, uh, if you if you summon us, we have no choice but to but to obey. But this is our home realm, absolutely. If we are absolutely uh, very much open to the ideas of challenges, to the ideas of uh, anyone coming into our realm to challenge us. And, and if they seek to summon us to their realm for a challenge as well, we'd absolutely be open for the fight. <laughs> I agree with absolutely all of that because I think Jordan Grace showed the world that the knockouts could hang with anyone. So 100%. as Rosemary said, TNA is our home and that is where I will always consider home, but you never know what happens. You can take it's a true. And all, but, but also we want to make sure that the, the just sort of a, uh, equality in this exchange perhaps if if you're going to experience tna only by when our warriors show up on other battlefields then you're not really experiencing the same thing if 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 their warriors don't come over to our battlefield is this really a, an interesting um give and take environment uh home turf is a, is a is a major advantage obviously in any sort of sports any sort of war to have the home field advantage uh sending us there exclusively to fight on their battlefield is a handicap <laughs> absolutely unless we're <laughs> going to come over and and fight on our turf as well <laughs> to see exactly where the advantages lie absolutely I agree. it's a very exciting time yes <laughs> Um, we will really cross is. that line. Speaking of battlefields, <laughs> we've got one coming up soon enough in No Surrender on the 23rd of February. Um, I'll be watching it on YouTube. I've got TNA Plus, but because I've got my YouTube subscription, I'll be keeping that and I'll probably be watching the pay per views over, over on that and kind of, uh, you know, giving my cash to both, both sides, which is <laughs> nice. But speaking of that event, you've got MK Ultra probably wanting a rematch. Do we reckon that could go down at No Surrender? Do you think? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, oh I, I'm, I'm honestly hoping for it, Rosemary. Mm -hmm. There's yes. so much, there's so much history there that people don't realize, especially with Masha. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was so sweet that victory that Rosemary and I had it hard to kill, but Masha and Killer Kelly. They're not someone to be trifled with. Yeah. Of course, we know that. Absolutely. But we like to play, and we play hard, and we play dirty, too. So mm -hmm. I'm almost hoping that they come and meet us back in our battlefield for that re that rematch. They're not going. These title mm -hmm. belts are not going anywhere, though. No. That's a pretty belt you've got there, I must say. <laughs> That's right. I, I've also got to say, if you had come into that particular fight say as Courtney and Jessica, would it have gone down the same way? Did you need another edge? Did you need to lean into other realms, perhaps, to find that mm. edge? Perhaps. Obviously, there are uh, endless different timelines. There, There is a reality where Courtney and Jessica went into that war. It's just... um didn't end well and we chose not to go with that timeline <laughs> uh Courtney and Jessica as we said in last week's sermon served a purpose to stay alive to stay employed uh until we were ready <laughs> to reclaim the driver's seat and make sure we still had a job to do it and ooh, they came close a couple of times didn't they <laughs> you really oh yes especially Jessica <laughs> and I'm so sick of hearing about her no, she's oh. very loud <laughs> Very loud. I, I won't but, mention yes. her again. I, I don't want to uh, cause any havoc. As well. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about dark personas and and embracing them and living them. Like we've seen many awesome wrestlers across lots of different companies embrace something darker, something more supernatural in wrestling. And there's always an audience for it. There's always a group of people, myself included, who who lap it up. And what is it? Do you think about that that just endures in wrestling? Curiosities is uh, wrestling as itself is full of curiosities. It started as a, a, a carny business, uh, which that the roots in that is is 
displaying curiosities for those who are who who want their mind expanded to see these these taxidermied animals with two heads and believe that perhaps that two-headed animal was real once we're also very curious by the unknown the the macabre the uh the absolute out of this world things that we can't comprehend but we wish were real because it makes something our existences uh that much more interesting if there are things out there that we don't quite know and can't explain there's an absolute draw to the macabre an absolute draw to the occult if you will <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and uh Absolutely. With wrestling fans, they're already encouraged to use their imagination to flesh out these stories and these larger than life characters that are going to war before your very eyes. And something represented in, in, in dark powers and dark forces. A lot of people think these things are influenced their their day to day lives as well. So why shouldn't they influence their entertainment? Ooh, Absolutely. I, I and there was a demographic there of, of lost humans looking for someone to follow who looks like them mm, who the weirdos the same things. <laughs> exactly we are the weirdos mister yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> but as i was saying i feel like the fans they, they want something different not everybody um you know is looking for the the beautiful popular you know, specimens that we have, you know, and that's the beauty of TNA is we have a knockout for every demographic of every person who might feel a little left out. So I think that's what makes the dark side a little more curious, as Rosemary has said. And I think that's what makes us, you know, being originals of it all that much better. <laughs> Speaking about people who might be younger or different demographics and representing, do did you both have anyone uh, when you were younger that you watched wrestling and, and associated with those people? Because let's be honest, a long time ago, we, it was a very different era, wasn't it? Particularly with women's wrestling. It wasn't quite what it is now. But was there anybody you guys looked at? It could be men or women. And you thought that, that right there. I love that. There you go. <laughs> uh well do you want to go first i can sure so i remember when i was starting to watch you know the art of these types of battles uh i was particularly interested in a few women um by the name of luna vashan mm -hmm. jazz and um Bulnicano. those were women who stood out in my mind who I really paid attention to because there was just grit and aggression behind everything they did and not taking anything away from any of, of the other women in that era. But these women, they were different. And they, every, every movement, there was a, a sense of urgency behind it. There was a purpose. And that is something that I paid attention to and that I really you know kind of it kind of led me into this path of what we're doing today yes and unapologetically different each of them yes and, and different from the norms different from the the gender norms that that exactly. uh, people were forced into especially women in entertainment and sports uh the fact that they were standing out and not uh looking like overproduced barbies uh, not that we're disparaging overproduced Barbies because there is a market for overproduced Barbies. <laughs> However, sure when every single flavor presented to you is overproduced Barbie, it's a little bit difficult to feel like you belong anywhere when everything that's being told to you is you need to look like this or you don't belong anywhere. So you have these women that look different. We'll add sensational sherry onto that. Yes. Uh, for more current examples, we'll put in Daphne. We'll put in China and someone who has major influence on us, Roxy Laveau. All of these women embracing and absolutely being unapologetically different and weird. Those are the ones that broke barriers and absolutely allowed us to be even more weird and even more extravagantly <laughs> off the walls on our presentation. <laughs> And it's been so fun. Oh, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Decay again. I've been watching Decay since the very beginnings. 
and and you were all bloody scary back at the start. I'm just gonna say, um, but yeah. particularly you, Rosemary, and, and and Steve as well. But do you think? Do you ever envision? Got nothing on Steve. Oh, I can <laughs> say. But... <laughs> that, that people back in the day. Do you ever envision, though, bringing Crazy Steve back into the fold, especially now that he's more embracing the darkness as well? When Crazy Steve is ready and willing and desiring of companionship with Decay again, when he's ready to come back, he will absolutely be welcomed with open arms. But our absolutely. brother right now is in potentially his final form, and he is on a mission that, as far as we can tell, needs to be completed and followed out by Crazy Steve. We cannot go and do his destiny for him. We cannot go and complete his mission for him. If he needs our help, we're here. But if he needs to do it himself, we're hands off until he calls. The thing that I love about this the most is that Crazy Steve is one of the under most underrated warriors. And I am so glad that he is finally showing the world what Crazy Steve is all about. Absolutely. And as Rosemary said, when he's ready, we will be welcoming back with open arms. Absolutely, we will. And yeah. if he never is, then we'll mourn him, but we will absolutely support him. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> So, but who else on the TNA roster? And again, it could be a knockout or it could be a male wrestler. Who do you think on the roster right now could make a good fit to Decay? Now, they might need a little bit of work, you know, uh, brought into the dark side, a bit of time in the undead realm, whatever it'll be. Um, but Rosemary, you especially, about, you know, you, you were able to kind of turn Sue Young to your cause. So surely that work can be done on anyone else. Mm -hmm. The Undead Bride is an anomaly and absolutely impossible to control. Yeah. She would be like having a wild dog on a leash made of <laughs> bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be a very fun time to watch. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, who could? Who? Let's see. That that question falls in twofold. It'd be almost like who's already ready, who already fits the bill for sure. a belonging and decay, or who is corruptible enough to turn into <laughs> our side. Because some of these people will need corrupted. But that is for absolutely. sure. Absolutely. So very fun. There are fun prospects out there that wouldn't necessarily fit, but ooh, thinking about adding them into our army is someone with the power of hmm, Jake something. Oh, oh well, isn't that something? <laughs> Can I make a recommendation? Huh. Yes, please. Again, she'll need a little bit of work, but in terms of being corruptible, I think Giselle Shaw. Imagine the dark version of Giselle Shaw. Um, Giselle I'm, Shaw is her own dark version. Maybe that's what <laughs> yes, I mean. She is. Just needs a little push. <laughs> Would Giselle follow instructions? Which is not be a good minion. We'd have to take away her free will for one thing. She certainly got a lot of it. <laughs> that is that that is a very good point because mm. my God, she just <laughs> won't. <sighs> she doesn't shut she, up. It's, she would be oh, she would be really difficult. And I don't know. I don't know that I would be able to handle it. I might end up twisting her head off before we even get to the part <laughs> of corruption. <laughs> Well, that's a good point. She's she's not really a team player, is she? I suppose. Mm -mm, so maybe, no. maybe I'll take. I it. think her history has proven that. How yeah, many well, tag yeah. teams has she does. broken apart? Yes, she might be the one to bring the downfall of Decay. Let's keep her away from it. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> no, take it back. You. I'll take it back. But I've got However, one. However, Savannah. Oh. Ooh, oh, Savannah. <laughs> she has some cannibalistic yeah, instincts for sure, mm -hmm. and but has no problem mean. consuming her own kind. No. <laughs> I've got one final thing to ask Good you about before I, I get lost in the undead realm um, again you guys have been with TNA for a while now like you say you're both knockouts originals which is incredibly impressive how has the company in all its iterations been as a home to you both hmm not on tumultuous but in a good way in the sense that it's always been uh, the, the, in nature, stagnancy is death, chaos is life. And if there's one thing that's been in our time at TNA slash impact slash TNA with a little bit of GFW thrown in there, 
<laughs> it has been a tumultuous ride. And at the same time, one worth sticking to because these, these, the, the, the seas, as they're tossing, that means there's life. There's things going on. There is evolution happening. And one of the reasons we chose TNA and one of the reasons we decided to stay with TNA and, and have been adamant about staying with TNA is that this sense of change you, is, has, been, has been broiling for years. And it's something that we wanted to be a part of and at the head of and absolutely the vanguard of, even if you want to continue the terms of, of battle. This is us taking what we have fought for what we have refused to give up refused to die and and remolded into something that is familiar and yet fresh this rebranding of tna is the absolute epitome of evolution and it's validating to see finally the thing that we thought we felt was coming for all these years it's finally here and we are a part of it and at the vanguard that's awesome. Absolutely. And I, I would I think I would have to agree with everything that Rosemary had to say as per usual. I will add though that I will always have a loyalty to TNA. Mm -hmm. They are the only ones who accept me as I am. And that is something that will always keep me loyal and motivated to always do everything that Rosemary and I can to make sure that we're putting on a good show no matter what. Yes. And to be fair, what other company would allow us to kidnap half the roster twice <laughs> and not be sent to HR a single time? That's good. <laughs> Are you referring to Russell House? Freedom. <laughs> yes. Awesome. All right then, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, we WrestleSphere, we look forward to talking to you again. Mm, thank, thank you very you much, Sam. Samuel. A pleasure.